banished from Earth Classic Game Room broadcasts from the Intergalactic Space Arcade on its never-ending mission to review everything. Welcome to Classic Game Room, broadcasting to you from in front of Outdoor Simulation Wall 9000, simulating an arctic environment for the review of Vector Man on Sega Genesis, not the Gamecom. Boo! Vector Man from 1995 on the Sega Genesis. You know, there's a lot of games that I play where I have to ask myself, why isn't this a household name? Why didn't Vector Man really catch on? Why aren't we up to Vector Man 12 by now? With Vector Man Kart Racing and Vector Man Tactics. Vector Man First Person Shooter. Vector Man the Movie starring Jean-Claude Van Damme versus Street Fighter. Also starring Jean-Claude Van Damme. Dr. Vector Man and of course, Vector Man on the Vectrex. Versus Godzilla. Because those who have experienced Vector Man love it. It's a great game. Sadly, a casualty of its release date. Vector Man is a great game and shows what the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive was capable of in 1995. Incredible visuals, rich detailed backgrounds, great music and most importantly, solid gameplay. Vector Man is an extremely well-made platformer. But 1995 was at the tail end of the Sega Genesis lifespan, and tastes were beginning to change. People were starting to get into 3D games like Doom and Goldeneye 007. In 1995 and 96, people were moving on to the Sony PlayStation, Sega Saturn, and N64. After one sequel, unless you're a Sega Genesis fanboy, Vector Man has pretty much faded away into obscurity. But we should never forget the majesty of Vector Man, because this is a truly remarkable game. And it's a shame that he was never really supported and allowed to flourish like Rayman. But let's look at Vector Man. What makes this game so damn good? Well, for starters, the visuals and the music are great. It's a pretty traditional platformer for the most part. You run around, you jump, you shoot enemies, and collect some power-ups, which make Vector Man alter his form a bit. He can turn into bombs and, like, cars and stuff that open up new parts of the levels, and the levels are big. It's like Sonic the Hedgehog big. There's lots of room to explore, and upgrades laying everywhere. Health upgrades, shotgun power-ups, machine gun power-ups. At the end of most of the levels, Vector Man battles an end boss, and he's scored for all of the stuff that he collects and TV sets that he destroys. Ironic, considering that Vector Man was played on TV. If the game has a weak point, it's these top-down levels that feel out of place and don't really play like Vector Man. The side-scrolling parts are fluid and play really well, and there's very little slowdown considering how much stuff is going on on-screen at once. There's a lot of good lighting effects in Vector Man as well, considering this is a 2D game. The backgrounds are always extremely interesting, good use of colors. And while Vector Man the character is likable, he's not terribly well drawn out. Maybe that would have come with more sequels. Like, what's his personality? He's kind of a cool dude, but aside from saving the Earth, what's Vector Man's real motivation? I like this level a lot. Love the music. 
which sounds great in stereo. These days, Vector Man can be found pretty much anywhere. It's on the virtual console, as well as in numerous Sega Genesis collections like Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. I think Vector Man is due to make a return. I have two people to thank for sending this Sega Genesis game cartridge to the show. Here's a big classic game room shout out and thank you to Henry from Columbia, Maryland, as well as Mohammed from Qatar. Viva le Vector Man! May he return on the Vectrex. Or at least the Sega 32X.